There's nothing like hot tuna grilled cheese sandwiches to satisfy that hunger pang instantly. Today we're taking a look at three delicious tuna melts recipes. First up is our classic tuna melt with mayo. Now for this we're using tuna flakes packed in water. The reason we're using tuna flakes in water and not tuna flakes in oil is because we're using cheese in the sandwich and we don't want that extra oil to make our sandwich heavier. So we're going to drain the tuna and add it to a bowl. To this we're going to add half an onion that has been diced. Once we've added that, we can add our fresh herbs. You can add two tablespoons of either dill, parsley or cilantro, whichever one you like. And for some added crunch and freshness, we're going to add two tablespoons of finely diced celery. I also would like to add one and a half tablespoons of chopped pickle. You can use dill or sweet pickle or pickle gherkins. Now we're going to add some mayo to taste. Now you can add as less or as much mayonnaise as you like. But I like to start with two tablespoons. And if I need more, I can add some later. You don't want too much because we are also using the cheese. And to this, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of mustard. I usually use mild American mustard, but today I'm trying out a English mustard instead. So we're going to stir this. I think I'll add just a little bit more of mayo, not too much because we're also going to add the cheese. This looks just about right and this is how I like it. Wrap a spoon of that in some lettuce, um, it's really good. So the, to this we can add some salt and pepper to taste. Usually I don't add any salt, just pepper. And freshly cracked pepper is the best, of course. So that's our first filling ready. We set that aside. Now the second one is the old-fashioned tuna melt with cream of mushroom. So there's no mayo in this tuna melt sandwich. Again, we start off with a can of tuna flakes in water that has been drained. Add that to a bowl. Two tablespoons of diced celery. And here we're going to add one shallot that has been minced or you can use finely chopped onion, about a tablespoon. I prefer to use the shallots. And now we're going to add half a cup of cream of mushroom soup. We're also going to season this to taste, add some pepper. And here I'm going to add two tablespoons of chopped parsley.
So now what we're going to do, we're going to add this to a saucepan and we're going to cook this till it's reduced to a nice spreadable consistency. You do want to keep stirring this occasionally so that it doesn't get scorched to the sides of your saucepan. I cooked mine for about one and a half minutes and it was ready. This is the consistency that I'm after. You don't want it too runny. And the next tuna melt and the last one today is our spiced tuna melt with tomato. So to a small pan or wok we're going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. To this, add half a chopped onion and saute lightly. And again, it's one can of tuna flakes in water that has been drained. You want to stir fry this until most of the moisture from the tuna has evaporated. And you want to add one tablespoon of either tomato paste or concentrated tomato puree. We're also going to add a teaspoon of paprika or mild chili powder. You want to keep stir frying this uh, till you get a nice texture and it's no longer too moist but you don't want to over fry the tuna because it tends to get a little chewy and hard. We're going to season this and add some fresh herbs. I'm adding two tablespoons of parsley. I also sometimes add dill. If you like cilantro, that's an option as well. And once it's cooled down a little bit, we're going to add two tablespoons of mayo. This makes it nice and rich and creamy. Mix till it's nicely blended. And the filling looks like this. So that's our three different fillings. The classic, the one with mushroom and the one with spice and tomato. So when you're making your tuna melts, you want to use a type of bread that is um, sturdy enough to handle the filling that you're using. If it's too light or too soft, it tends to break up when we grill the sandwich. Use any type of bread that you like really. We're just going to add some filling, the appropriate amount and a slice of natural cheese. We're going to wrap the sandwich in foil paper. And we're going to repeat the process with the mushroom tuna melt. In the case of the mushroom, you, you want to use an even sturdier type of bread. So another slice of cheese. And wrap in foil. And our spiced tuna and tomato melts. My daughter really loves this this one. In particular, she says it tastes like pizza, especially when I use a herb bread. So there we have it, more cheese, and we're going to wrap it up in aluminum foil again. You don't want to wrap it too tightly, just securely. And now we're going to grill our tuna melt sandwiches. You can either do this on the stove top or on a grill pan. Or you can use your panini press or sandwich press. I prefer the sandwich press because it gives me a correct timing I just wait for the light to go off um, in a grill pan you need to grill for about one minute um, per side and 
do make sure that you don't cook it uh, too long because it will burn the bread even though it's wrapped in foil. So I just, I just feel the foil to see if it's warm enough for the cheese to have melted nicely and sealed the sandwich. So our tuna melts in three different styles are ready. Here's our classic tuna with mayo. And our spiced tuna with tomato. And our old-fashioned tuna with cream of mushroom. Hmm, looks like a burger. So I hope you give one of these recipes a try. Um, it really does satisfy that quick hunger pang. Quick to make um, and quite easy. I hope you enjoyed the video recipe. Tell us how you like your tuna melts. Thanks for watching.